Hello and welcome to the Overflow Podcast. My name is Craig Booker. The title of this episode is How to Stop Before You Flop. A lot of the material for this week's episode was inspired by Craig Rochelle's book, The Power to Change, Mastering the Habits That Matter Most. Note, I will talk a lot about mental health, but please note this is not a substitute for therapy or mental health care. I am not a counselor or physician. If you need help with mental health challenges, please find a qualified mental health professional. This episode's title is How to Stop Before You Flop. In this section of the book, uh, Craig Rochelle talks about life summary sentences. These are like one sentence that sums up an entire person's life. You've probably heard people use these life summary sentences about other people. Um, Some examples are, yeah, she fell into sin or he cheated on his wife. Another example from Judges 16 verses 1 was one day Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza and spent the night with a prostitute. Samson didn't live a short life, right? But this one sentence seems to sum up his entire life. Uh, A quote from Craig Rochelle, it says, disasters are rarely the result of an isolated decision. They are almost always the end of a slippery slope. Samson lived in the town of Zora. Some say was 25 miles from Gaza. You know, Samson didn't just take a quick walk across the street to get to Zora. Uh, it was 25 miles from his hometown of Gaza. Do you know how many steps it takes to go 25 miles? He did the math and it's approximately 56,250 steps. It wasn't that he got in his car and drove real quickly to this destination. He had a lot of time to think about this. We don't wreck our lives all at once, but a little at a time. He said, like erosion, we are all tempted to slide down that 56,250 step slope every day. That's why it's important to get a hold of our habits. Based on who you want to become, what one habit do you need to stop? Colossians 3, 1 through 3 and verse 10. You have been raised to life with Christ. Now set your heart on what is in heaven, where Christ rules at God's right side. Think about what is up there, not about what is here on earth. You died, which means that your life is hidden with Christ who sits beside God. Each of you is now a person, now a new person. You are becoming more and more like your creator and you will understand him better. So here Paul is encouraging us to forget about who you were, know who you are in Christ and who you want to become in him. So in our study, we've been talking a lot about you know, the reason behind why we do things. We've been talking about the who we feel called to become. Uh, In Colossians 3, 5 verses, or 3, 5, and then 8 through 9, it says, don't be controlled by your body. Kill every desire of the wrong kind of sex. Don't be immoral or indecent or have evil thoughts. Don't be greedy, which is the same as worshiping idols. But now you must stop doing such things. You must quit being angry, hateful, and evil. You must no longer say insulting or cruel things about others and stop lying to each other. You have given up your old way, your old way of life with its habits. So here we're we're hearing this call. I believe this is from Paul as well to leave our old ways behind our old habits, our old desires. We are to kill off those desires and grow new habits into the person that we're to become. If you want to become who you want to become, there are some habits you need to give up. So based on who you want to become, what one habit do you need to break? Now, if this is overwhelming because there's not just one habit, but a lot, uh, know that you're not alone. All of us could probably sit and think about all these habits we need to break in our lives. And that process can really be overwhelming. Craig Rochelle says, you cannot defeat what you cannot define. So if we're not willing to specify what we're trying to quit, it's going to be really hard to defeat that bad habit. So. The question is, why is this so difficult for us? 
and uh, so we we have good habits are difficult to start because the pain comes now and the payoff is in the future. So no matter what that is, whether you're trying to start a new habit uh, to get in better physical shape, that's hard because when you start, it's painful. You know, your your muscles are sore immediately after, if not during your workout. And the payoff for that is far down the line. Likewise, if you know you're trying to, uh, like I've been trying to eat healthier so I can lose some weight. At first, when I I started tracking all the food that I'm eating each meal, so that I'm only eating so many calories each day, it was incredibly difficult. I could no longer just go and and grab whatever looked good for me to eat. I had to consider, you know, what was in my food because it's really easy uh, to go over the amount of calories I was supposed to eat in a day to be healthy and to lose weight. Um, and this pain was really, really a tough process. And now I'm over a month into this and it's still not completely easy, but the process is much more manageable than when I started. That's why these good habits are so hard to start is because the payoff that we're seeking is far out into the future. And likewise, if we contrast this with bad habits, it says bad habits are difficult to stop because the payoff comes now. The fun is now. And that's that's why they're so hard is the benefit is right now and the pain is in the future. Like the, maybe the pain is regret for that bad habit. And that regret doesn't come immediately. It's a little bit after the habit. Craig Rochelle says, why resist a temptation tomorrow if you have the power to eliminate it today? We need to understand cues and identify the ones that trigger our habits. We talked about, uh, I believe it was in the past couple of weeks or the past couple of episodes, we've talked about cues or triggers that lead us into our habits. And so this is saying that we need to understand those cues and triggers so that we can better understand how to stop those habits, those bad habits. Uh, we are going to remove the triggers that tempt us to take actions that lead in the wrong direction. So if you are trying to stop overeating, you know, there may be certain cues or triggers that cause you to go grab food when you're not hungry or grab too much food. And so it's recognizing what those triggers or cues are so that we can interrupt the process. If we can't remove the cues altogether, we will put up some roadblocks to prevent us from setting foot on the path of the wicked. I have a quote here from the book. It says, how do you win the battle and break the habit? Remove the triggers. God is the one who gave us this idea of eliminating instead of battling temptation. It says, flee from sexual immorality, uh, 1 Corinthians 6.18, or run from anything that stimulates youthful lust, 2 Timothy 2.22, New Living Translation. So uh, I have an example here. If you're trying to eliminate pornography triggers, uh, you will figure out what stimulates your youthful lusts. So for a person that's struggling with pornography addiction, the idea is to figure out what stirs up or stimulates those desires. And the examples in the book were, you know, if social media apps are your trigger, delete the app or the apps. If it is watching a certain TV show, stop watching that show. Maybe it is being alone when you travel on business. Uh, maybe you could make travel arrangements that take this option away where you're not alone. The habits you have today are shaping who you will become tomorrow. One step at a time, your habits are taking you somewhere. If you don't like where they're taking you, change your habits. If you change your habits, you will change your life. Again, these are principles we built on from from past episodes or past weeks. And so we're piling all, a lot of this together um, in this lesson. 
All right, so we have an exercise. And this exercise is more intensive for good reason. And if a habit you are struggling with, especially in secret, could lead to a Samson type ending for you, digging in and being fully transparent in your response to these questions could bring you clarity and understanding. Let your answers lead to change and let the change lead to freedom. All right, so we've got a list of questions here. Um, as always, I encourage you to do this at, at some time in your week and go through this exercise, but we're just gonna briefly go over each of these questions. It's, what is one habit you know you must or you most need to stop? Uh, next was, what is the best thing that could happen if you are successful and quit? So what is the worst thing that could happen if you continue or get worse? When you think about stopping, what is your rationalization for continuing? And then last is what cues regularly create triggers for your habit? So these are all a list of questions really to help us reflect on what is going on in the situation so we can better understand it and possibly interrupt or put up a roadblock to keep us from going from that cue to acting on your desire. So before we talked about how that we have that cue and then there's a craving immediately after that cue. So this is trying to interrupt from going, you know, you have a cue, you have a craving, and then typically you respond in some way. So this is trying to interrupt that and help you understand how to kind of break that cycle of that bad habit. The principle for this section is good habits are difficult to start because the pain comes now and the payoff is in the future. Bad habits are difficult to stop because the payoff comes now and the pain is in the future. Galatians 6, 9 of the New Living Translation says, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest, a blessing if we don't give up. But yeah, this, this whole section is difficult. I don't know if, if it is for you guys. It's 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 really difficult, like you said, because, you know, the bad habits that we're trying to get rid of really reward us immediately. And that makes quitting those really difficult. But I, I hope this kind of breaks down the process in a more practical way to help each of us stop bad habits that we want to stop. You know, if we understand who we're we are trying to become the person we are trying to become. There are habits that are getting in the way of that. So, if you're like what I think most people go through when they're doing this exercise, you know, when we are talking about who before do, like who we are supposed to become, we probably went through and listed a bunch of habits that we need to break or we need to stop, and the list might need might be overwhelming for a lot of you, but you know that to become who you're supposed to become or who you're supposed to be, you need to break some of those habits, but you just don't know where to start. And so, you know, maybe it's before you get started, it's time to reflect on it, pray, ask God for some clarity on what habits you need to stop. And, you know, another approach to this is to look at your list of habits and see what would make the biggest impact right now if you stopped it. I think one of the questions was leading to that is, you know, thinking about what is the best thing that could happen if you're successful at quitting this habit? What could it lead to? Like, how does it how does it better enable you to become the person you're supposed to be? And if we look at that, we look at the why behind it. It helps to really keep us motivated when we're really struggling to break this habit. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes.